The Pulse School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by BASF. Hey, Kara Ustros here with realagriculture.com. I am here today with another Pulse School episode, and I have here with me Nikki Verkine, who is a technical marketing specialist with BASF. How's it going today? Good. How are you, Kara? I'm good. The wind's blowing, but we are, uh, we are in the field nonetheless, so it's always a good day. So we're here today to talk about inoculants. Before we kind of get into the depth of this, do you want to talk a bit about what inoculants are? Inoculants are a crop production input that are used for pulse and legume production. So peas, lentils, faba beans, chickpeas, soybeans are some of the common crops that are grown here in Western Canada. So these crops are all part of a really large family of plants that are very lucky to have the ability to be able to symbiotically fix atmospheric nitrogen and convert it into a form that the plant's able to use for all things growth. So where an inoculant comes into play is it provides high numbers of the viable bacteria that's required, so rhizobium bacteria that's required to create that symbiotic relationship and form nodules on the roots. The nodules um, are responsible for fixing nitrogen for that process. So now you mentioned rhizobium bacteria. Now that is the good bacteria. That's what makes the inoculums work. Yes, exactly. So that's the beneficial bacteria again that creates the symbiotic relationship with the plant roots and allows allows the the roots to form nodules to fix nitrogen for the plant ultimately eliminating the need for a grower to apply a synthetic nitrogen fertilizer with their with their pulse or soybean crop now are most pulse growers using a uh, inoculant at this point yeah it's fairly common practice nowadays for growers to know that they need to apply an inoculant annually um, if a grower does not choose to apply an inoculant with their pulse crops they would be solely relying on whatever native rhizobia population would be within that soil, which is common in our traditional pulse growing regions. However, those native rhizobia aren't as effective or efficient at um, nitrogen fixation. So that can impact the crop. And really it's crucial for growers to apply an inoculant annually to maximize nodulation, nitrogen fixation, and ultimately total yield potential of their crop. So just elaborate a bit more, you're talking about why they're important, but really why is it so crucial that we're using these inoculants? So it's very crucial to use an inoculant annually because they're providing viable, high numbers of robust rhizobia when and where the crop really needs it most. And the grower is going to ultimately benefit from the high, high nitrogen fixation coming from the nodules that are produced from the inoculation practice. Okay, and talk about the benchmark study you guys at BSF are currently working on. What is it? Very excited to talk about the benchmarking study today. So here at BSF, we set really high goals for ourselves. We strive to be the most reliable supp supplier of inoculants in the North American market. As part of that goal, we've initiated ongoing benchmarking studies where we took product from right from the marketplace here in Western Canada and tested the inoculants for quality and stability. So looking at impact rhizobia count claims as well as on seed survivability, depending on what formulation we're talking about. So, so what does the study bring back to, what value does it bring back to the producer? What we found with the results from our benchmarking study was that our BSF inoculant products not only meet our quality and stability claims, but often exceed our own product claims. However, what we found is some 
inconsistencies with competitor products on the market. So this has really shown that it's important for growers to talk to their retails, their agronomists, as well as their inoculant manufacturers to really understand the product and stability claims of that particular inoculant that they're using. And where, where was the study conducted? Where, what sorts of locations? The benchmarking study was a BSF global initiative, so it's conducted in our internal lab in Research Triangle Park in North Carolina, where our global development team is located. So we have a whole host of inoculant and biological experts that, that look at all these products in lab and ultimately um, conducting the benchmarking initiative for us. Okay, awesome. And uh, any other messages you'd like to send producers? Where, where can they find this study? The benchmarking study is available on the BSF website. I'd also encourage growers to talk to their BSF representative if they do have other questions or comments. Inoculants are really different than traditional synthetic chemistries. Inoculants are regulated through the CFIA's Fertilizer Act, and they have different requirements for um, showcasing product and stability claims. That's different compared to a PMRA-regulated product like a seed treatment or a herbicide. So it's really important for growers to understand that, know what they're getting out of their product, and that's ultimately, we want to make sure all growers get the most um, out of their inoculant product. Okay, and if a producer has never used an inoculant before, what is your number one message? What's your number one take home? My number one take home, if you're not familiar with inoculants, you've never used them on your farm, make sure you're following all the best management practices, both for storage and handling, as well as usability when it goes into your equipment. Um, biologicals are living, breathing organisms. They're kind of like us as humans. They don't want to be too cold. They don't want to be too hot. So it's really important to follow best management practices to make sure you have the best experience with that product. Okay, sounds great. Thank you very much for your time, Nikki. Thank you.